the 139th Psalm. Psalm. We'll take uh, we'll take the first twenty four verses again. Abundant living, abundant living. Last Wednesday we we kind of looked at who are we, what are we, where are we going. I believe that I said last Wednesday night that not everybody, every, we need a dream. We need a dream. And, you know, I, it, it gets to be in our world today whether it's, it's become a joke. You know, everybody, parents, uh, Martin Luther King's, I have a dream. For Martin Luther King, that was real. When he made that statement... You know, everybody, uh, everybody blows him out of proportion. Uh, the day that he made that statement, he wasn't the main speaker. There, the reason that that became famous was because somebody killed him. But his thought was tremendous. He had a real dream. It hasn't come to pass yet, but he had a real dream. I still have a real dream here. It, it bothers me to no end when I hear people talk about our church. It really does. It bothers me when I hear people talk about people in this church. It bothers me a lot. We shouldn't be talking about one another. We ought to be praying for one another and helping one another and lifting one another up. That's what we're here for. I, I know that there's things people don't like. I understand that. I have... I have no problem being different. I'm going to be who I am no matter what. I tried being like somebody else when I first started preaching. It didn't work. Didn't work at all. Uh, so what you see and what you hear, that's what I are. <laughs> I can, I'm not going to change that. Okay? Uh, if I... I'm going to say what I was going to say. You know, it's real easy to jump up and shake hands and hug on Sunday here at church. But you get these people outside of these walls, they don't act the same. If you see me uptown, if you get close enough to me, I'm going to give you a hug. I'm no different uptown than I am here on Sunday morning. If I still smoked cigars, I would sit out there on the bench with the folks that smoke and smoke my cigar and come in here and preach to you. I'm, I don't hide myself from you. What you see is what I am. Now, you may not, you don't know everything about me. You don't know all my problems and all my difficulties. And uh, if I have anything to do about it, with it, you're not going to. <laughs> all right. There are a couple of different kinds of dreamers. Uh, I told you, not, not everybody dreams equally. There are some people who, they dream at night. My wife has dreams all the time. She, she talks in her sleep. She talks in her dreams. There's times that uh, I've had to wake her up because her dreams are not good dreams. All right? I don't, I don't dream a whole lot. The dreams I do have sometimes are just stupid, so I don't pay attention to them, okay? But I can daydream. Uh, daydreaming is not functional either. I think I told you that, uh, you know, uh, Weight Watchers has you put a picture of a skinny person up on your refrigerator so you have a goal to work for. And uh, uh, 
when I was part of Amway, Amway would have us put something that we wanted, uh, a new car, a new house, uh, whatever. On, I, that, that was a goal that you worked for. All right? uh, the, the thing with that type of goal, we need some written goals. I'm going to, we're going to study something starting tonight called shape. Shape. What is your shape? Not Pillsbury Doughboy like me. Not wrong kind of shape. Okay, that's not the kind of shape we're talking about. 139th Psalm, begin with verse 1 with me. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting, my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, O oh, lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the othermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. No place. No place. That's why I have no problem with cremation. Somebody says cremation's a sin. You burn that body. When my dad was in the Navy, they buried people at sea, and the, and the sea destroys that body. All right? But there is no place that God cannot put you back together when it comes resurrection time. Nowhere. I don't care if you're in an urn on somebody's mantelpiece, or if you're at the bottom of the sea, or in a crib, or in a grave. God's going to put you back together with your glorified body. All right? I have no problem with that. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but night shineth as day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Again, I'm going to tell you that in God's eyes, a child is a, is a person at conception. That, that embryo doesn't have to get three weeks old or nine weeks old. Or God knew that child from the instant of conception, knew exactly what that child was going to be like. Understand what David says here. He, he said that you knew me before I was even fashioned. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I can count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I greed with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I, we need to dare. I mean really, really dare to dream. I, I, one time at a, in a new year, I had people write down their dreams for the coming year. I, I want, we, we started like in September, October. I, I told them, pray about them. And our watch night service, they turned them in. We wrote them down on paper, put them in an envelope, turned them in. I kept them under the pulpit for an entire year until the next year's watch night service. 
I got the box out one year later, began to read the dreams that people had written down. Do you know how many came true? can't just, a dream isn't going to do any good unless you put footwork to it. Okay? It's, it's not going to, you can't say, oh, I, you know, it's kind of like the old joke, you know, you can't go all, you know, you got a, a final test coming up, you can't go all week and then pray on Thursday night, oh, God, help me pass that test in the morning. Hey, it don't work that way. Okay? Uh, you got a dream, God has... God has instilled in every one of us some amazing possibilities. If we don't have a purpose, we don't have a dream. If other people and other churches do not like my dream, that's fine. Stay out of my dream. In other words, I don't want them here. If somebody comes to this church and all they're going to do is cause us problems, get out. We don't need you. There's no sense in you being here. If you're causing problems, this is not where God wants you to be. Go someplace where God wants you to be and go to work. If you're a child of God, get to work. But don't work against God here. Don't need that. I used to be scared to do that. But you know what? If you're causing problems, you're a sore for us. Where are you? are a sore. I'm going to ask God to cut you out. Get out of here. God doesn't need that here doesn't need it. You pick something up someplace where God can use you and go to work and I'll, I'll be, I'll say, thank God that they're, that they're working and souls are being saved and people, folks, I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know how many souls are going to be saved here. What I'm looking is people to be restored. We need people here who will get back to doing what God wants them to do and once they reach that point, if God moves them, let him move them. Let him move them. Some people can't stand, you know, this is kind of like an emergency room where all the problems come. And I'm thank God for that. I'm a problem. Okay? I don't mind being the emergency room leader. But some people don't like to stay once they get better. They're like my son Brian. You know, they wanted to keep him the other day when he had that surgery. And he said, you told me if I go to the bathroom, eat and not throw up, I can go home. I'm going home. And the doc said, you've got to be in pain. He said, yeah, but I'm going home. You didn't say nothing about pain. Can I handle it? Yes, let me go home. So he did. When I brought him home from Chicago, the first time he had that, every crack in the road, he said, Dad, are you hitting those cracks on purpose? <laughs> no. He hurt that bad, but he went home. All right? He made up his mind to do something. All right? We need to make up our minds to do something. We need to be helpers. We need to be workers. We need to be prayers. We need to be lovers. We need to love people. Care for people. All right? I want you to discover your unique shape. I did something today that I never, I very seldom ever look at Facebook. I'm trying to make some changes in my life. I'm trying to get myself a little bit more up to date on things, okay? I'm looking at Facebook, and i seen a picture that Becky had put on there, and I thought, if my wife sees that, she'll kill her. So I requested Becky she take that picture off. I don't like it. I know that going good. Well, my wife won't like it. If my wife don't like it, I don't like it. Get it off of there. Now, will it upset Becky? I don't know. Can I make her take it off? No. Not on my page, on hers. Right? That much I figured out. Okay. But I can request that she take it off. So I did. Okay. Not afraid to do that. Folks, there's a side of me that you're going to run into one of these days that you may not like very well. Because there is a time where I'll tell you, no, you're not going to do that. Or no, we as a church are not going to do that. I do know the word no. 
I don't use it very often, but I do know it. <laughs> All right. Our shape. Uh, let's see. Maybe we're going to call this shape. When I was in college, all the, all the first classes started out with, you know, like it was psychology 101. All right. So this is shape 101. Okay. S is your spiritual gifts. Every one of us that have crossed the line of faith and accepted Christ as our Savior has at least one gift. I am, I believe more. You have one gift that might be predominant. One gift that you're able to do better than any other gift that God has given you. But every one of us has a gift. Every one of us. God doesn't save someone and not give them a gift to use. So you and I need to learn our specific gift. I love to teach. I love it. I really do. I love to teach. It's real difficult for me to separate teaching and preaching. To be real honest with you, when he gives some pastors, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, you notice that that's together? I don't think you can be a pastor or a preacher. It's not in our text. It's not in the Psalms. I don't think you can be a, a pastor without teaching. Can't. Can't separate that. So we're going to start out and, and nothing nothing deep. At least I, I guess I don't think it's deep. Take a look at uh, Romans chapter 5. Or, yeah. Romans chapter 12. I got Romans 5 and 8 on my mind and that's why I said that. But that that's something else. Romans chapter 12. That one says that he's given us an ability to do certain things well. Uh, six. Yeah. All right. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to to the proportion of faith. Now it goes on to ministry, to exhortation, to giving, to loving, to be to be kind. There's all the, here's all these gifts, but there is a particular one that's yours. There are some people that can just lift you up. I, I've told you and told you. I, I know I, you probably get tired of hearing about Sister Moon. This woman was just. I, I thought I thought Sister Moon could walk on water. I mean, I heard some just absolutely wonderful things about her. And she was just, a, a to me, a, a saint, a godly Christian woman. She's dying of cancer at St. Anthony's Hospital. And I went to visit her. <coughs> I went in there to lift her up. And I left lifted up. I don't know how many people she led the Lord in there. How many people she told how wonderful her Lord was. And I got to be a, 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 privilege, a privilege to be a pallbearer for her. And then I found out what she was like for real, that she liked to take a drink nearly every night. Did that make her any less godly? No. No. She was still the same woman. Still the same woman that led people to the Lord in the hospital. Still the same woman that told everybody how great her Lord was. Yeah. When I found that out, I said, oh, 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 she's a for real saint. For real. Not one of those ones that they paint pictures of or, or they put on a pedestal. A for real one. One that's got flesh and blood. Living. Wow. I didn't know there was for real saints. I didn't know that. She had an ability to uplift people. I think that was her gift. I didn't know it then. One of her gifts. All right heart. What do you really care about? What do you really care about? A long, 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 long time ago, my two oldest boys 
Patrick and Angela weren't even born yet. Brian and Kevin were going through that stage where they thought they were uh, as bad as bad could be. But they, they, Kevin told me that I couldn't spank him. He'd call the, he didn't say child protective services, but I think he said he'd call the law. I mean, I said, you can call him right after I beat your butt with the belt. They got pretty smart with me once. I sent them down. They got smart with my, with their mom. I set them down, and I said, you know what? You boys are going to force me to make a choice, and you ain't going to like it. They got kind of quiet, and I said, because I will kick your ass out of the house now. Because I intend to spend the rest of my life with your mother. You can get out. They said, Make a choice. Either suck it up, listen, get out. Now, <laughs> what do I care about? I care about my wife a lot. I, I care about God a lot. If I don't tell you the truth, I'm in trouble. Okay? I'm in trouble. Proverbs 27 and 19, uh, there's a book written about uh, something about the man's face in a mirror, and I can't remember exactly what the title is. I read so many books I forget. 27 19 says, As in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man man you know as the years go by I I don't look much different now I didn't think that I did five years ago or ten years ago or fifteen years ago or but down in our basement hangs my graduation and it's, it's a big one, you know. There's no bags under the eyes. I don't know. I don't even think there's, there's, there's only one chin there. And I can't see down far enough to see the Pillsbury Doughboy, but I know it wasn't there because it only weighed 132 pounds back then. That boy don't look the same. Well, because he became a man, for one thing. Right? Became a man. When I look in the, in the mirror now, what I see is what I have become. You know, I... Uh, my granddaughter made me feel bad one day. I, I think I told you folks this. She run and grabbed my hand. She does that a lot. It depends on how hard she grabs it. And she can almost put me to the floor. But she grabbed my hand and she stopped and she looked up at me and said, Papa, why are your hands so soft? I didn't realize that I lost all my calluses. They're not there. You know? I, I've been retired so long. You know? I told her, I said, you know, my hands are not soft. But look at this alligator skin. Watch this. I can make it wrinkle. <laughs> yeah, I can. I don't like that. <laughs> but it'll do it. My wife set some moisturizer on my dresser and said, use that. I'm going to smell like almonds or something. <laughs> did Beth do that to you, Russ? <laughs> oh, you did it to Beth. No, oh, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just messing. 
That's the honest truth, though. She did put moisturizer on there. I think it was Jurgen's almond something. I don't know what it was. But. All right. Heart. What do you see? What do you see? We see our face in the mirror. What do you see when you look at your heart? I mean, for real, what do you see? What do you see? Do you see love for people? I love you. You're, a, you're all a pain in the neck sometimes. You know that? You really are. And you're sometimes, sometimes you're a pain in other places. But I love you. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to. Man, I told somebody the other day that there's so much that God wants me to tell you. I'll never live long enough. Bob said he was thinking about living to be 120. I don't even know if that would do it, Bob. I, I don't know. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Always agree with you? No. Always like you fussing with each other? No. That's not what we're supposed to do. Love you? Yes. Yes. Man, do I love you. Take heart. What do you really really care about, really care about, your abilities, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse What, what abilities? Do you, you know, some of you folks have natural abilities. Some of you folks, your voices are absolutely beautiful. I mean, even, I, 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 I don't know music, but I just love to hear some of you. I really do. Some of you, I love to hear you sing. I really do. I love to hear the church sing when we're together. I, I really do. There's a lot of times where uh, I'm like Jim Snow. I want to push you faster than the song goes because, to me, we're not in a funeral home. But we're not. We're not doing a, a what's that? A funeral? What they call that? Dirge or dirt? What, what is that? Dirge? Anyway, you know it's not. No. No. Man, God's grace is amazing. I mean, amazing. We don't sing it that way. If the piano is playing in a certain way, we're stuck. We got to. You've got to. I, to, I don't turn my mic on because you all know I can't keep up with anything. I'm either ahead or behind or, you know, I try to sing those. I can't sing. I just say the words of those parts where nobody else is singing, you know. <laughs> but I have fun. I really do. Ability. Second Corinthians 1 and 21 with me. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God. I hear all these preachers on TV saying, Woo! I got the anointing! So do you. They have nothing that you don't have. I got news for you. Them boys up there that's telling you they're anointed, yeah, it's okay. They probably are, but so are you. God has anointed every one of you with an ability to do something. Start doing it. Start doing it. I get a little, sometimes I get tickled. I really do. I think, man, don't these guys read their Bible? I am, I'm a blood-bought, born-again, anointed, Holy Spirit-led. I could go on and on and on. Man, we'd have a sign out there 100 feet high, and I'd be the, I don't know. We could put all kinds of names in front of us, but the problem is you could put yours right beside me and put 
probably every name on there except maybe you're not called to preach. But we're saints, we're anointed, we, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're spirit led. We are an absolute, you know, the Bible calls us a peculiar people. It's no wonder. No wonder we'll, we are peculiar people. You have abilities. Now, personalities. Personalities. Uh, we, we got the S, H, A, the P, personalities. Are you an A-type personality, kind of high-strung, revved up all the time? And, you know, or you might be a type B personality, and you're kind of laid back, nuclear explosion wouldn't even bother you. you just, ah. hey, see that mushroom cloud over there? Whoopee! You know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right. there, there are others. I'm kind of being a little, uh, I think the word's facetious, but that's... Some people will come to somebody else whining. Some people will hug them. Somebody else will say, get a life and stop whining. All right? Depends on your personality. Okay, depends on your personality. You need to figure out what kind of personality you've got. Some personalities don't work good together. They just don't. Okay? Uh, Bob and I have the same personality, when we go out soul winning, we have the same personality. When a bad dog chases us, we both run. Amen. That happened to us. At least I think it was a big dog. I never looked back. I was ahead of Bob. I think I was ahead of him going up the stairs. I got ahead of him when we headed for the car. I, I was a boogieing. <laughs> Sound like a big dog to me too, Bob. I'm not sure we've seen him, but both of us sure boogied. Uh, all right. Your experiences. Now, this is the one thing that I want you to understand that you need to get a handle on. Uh, everything you've been through. Everything you've been through. God can use to help. Everything. When someone talks to me and they say, oh, you don't know what my life has been like. I say, I don't care. We've probably got somebody in church that have been through what you've been through, if not worse. They say, oh, no. So I start naming off things and pretty soon their eyes get big and they go, really? No. Yeah. Now, I tell you that God can save you. Your experiences, God can use. Uh, your attitude. Hey, I don't know who first said this. I, I, I didn't look it up. Your attitude is going to determine your altitude. How high, how, how well you feel, how well you do. When my wife first had cancer. That doctor, I think, did my wife and I both dirty. When he'd done the surgery and it came back positive that she had cancer, uh, she doesn't wake up very quick. He left. And left me to tell her. She didn't know yet. So when she woke up and looked at me, For a year, she had the surgery, and for a year, she was just ready to die. Everything they told her, oh, you're going to live five years and die, you're going to live five years and die. All the films they showed her, everything, all the booklets they gave her. Finally, I told her, I got mad. I told her, I said, okay. I said, I want you to go see any more movies, I don't want you to get any more booklets, and... 
change this thinking attitude. She said, what? And I said, all right, you've already wasted a year. You waste, let's say you only have five years. You wasted a year. You want five good years? You got four left. You want four good ones or four bad ones? She looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, your choice. I said, you can act like this from now to whenever you die, or you can change the way you think. Change the way you think. I went to work. Home that night. She had showered, fixed supper. I said, wow. What's going on? She said, you're right. You're right. Attitude. Attitude. Twenty-some years ago. Vultures and hummingbirds fly over the same desert. You know what the vulture looks for? Dead things. You know what the hummingbird looks for? The nectar. What are you looking for? You come into church looking for problems. You're going to find them. We got them. You're going to church. You come in here looking to love people and help people. You're going to find them. We got that too. They're going to seek, hummingbirds are going to seek the sweet things. Okay. They're going to seek the sweet things. Your attitude is going to depend. How many of you have ever heard the, the story about the, the, there's this little boy going along selling these little magazines and this fellow walked out of the bank saying, Mr. 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 Would you please buy one of these little magazines? The fellow takes a cigar. I said, what are you selling a magazine for, boy? He said, I'm trying to raise a million dollars. <laughs> and the old fellow laughed. He said, <laughs> how much are they? He said, a quarter. He said, you're going to do it all by yourself. So my brother's on the other side of the street helping me. Attitude. He had no, he had no problem thinking that he was going to get that done. Attitude. All right? hundred people in here. Attitude. Attitude. Our, our, it's, it's what we see. If we come in looking for bad, we're going to find bad. If we come here looking for good, you're going to find good. All right? Attitude. Uh, probably a lot of these points come out of John Maxwell's a motivational speaker. Uh, I took some classes years ago that, that he had, and, and he's an amazing speaker. He really is. You know somebody else I like? I don't I don't agree with all his doctor, but I love Joe Olstein. I think he's one of the most motivated motivational speakers I've ever seen. Alright? Uh, I don't know what he is now. Back ten years ago, he was he was uh, uh, pretty good. Still is? Alright. Let me give you something. If a dream without a positive attitude, that's just gonna be a daydreamer, nothing gonna happen. A positive attitude without a dream, you're not going to make any progress. You can have a positive attitude. All smiles and all happy-go-lucky and everything, but you don't do anything because you don't have a goal. You don't have a dream. Those are good people, but they're good for nothing. They really don't. They smile. You know, they're happy, but they don't go anywhere. All right? Nice people to be around, but they don't get you anywhere. All right? Yeah. A dream with a positive attitude. Uh, let's see. Somewhere I read, I think it's an Italian proverb, and don't hold me to the nationality because I'll probably be wrong, that says between saying and doing, many a pair of shoes are worn out. Okay. That's true. All right. Uh, we've got to have we've got to have some direction. So our shape. What do we really look like? Not. Man, I really do not like my physical shape. I told you last that one time I went to the doctor. They shouldn't have full length mirrors in doctors' offices. Not not in not in exam rooms. No. 
especially not around where you have to sit on that. I'm not kidding, folks. He had me take my shirt off and my T-shirt and sit on that table, and I sat on that table, and he went out to get something. I looked at that mirror and looked like a mushroom with a head on it. <laughs> That's it. I don't like that. No. No. Man. Where did that thing come from? Looks like something from aliens or, you know, terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. All right. All right. I'm going to challenge you to write right. Now, I don't, don't give it to me. I want you to write a dream down. I have a, I've, I've going, I'm going to set, a, I need to lose 31.7 pounds by January. <laughs> now listen, for me, that'll take nigh on to a miracle. You want to write my obituary while you're at it? I, that's the only way it's going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, 31 pounds for me, I think, is probably too much. But I, 20 pounds is probably doable. That's a, that's a good couple-month goal. All right? uh, you're right. Anything would be. All right. Write down a goal. Write it down. You don't have to show it to anybody, but write it down. The reason why that you write it is it becomes personal then. This is my goal. Not, not, uh, not Bob's or Rick's or, or, uh, or anybody else. Not Travis's or, or Brother Robert's. Steve's hiding back there. Or, or. I don't think that'll work. <laughs> Be specific. Be specific. If you want to see more people in this church, don't just say, I want to see more people. Say, I want to see my cousin Josh here and work on bringing Josh here. That'll get more, one more, one more adds one more adds one more. Be specific. All right? Be specific. Make it achievable. That's why I'm not going to do 31 pat because I don't think I can do. I really don't. I know me. I, if I eat decent, it's achievable. It, well, it has to be achievable. All right, it has to be achievable. It has to be measurable. I can measure my weight loss. Can you measure? Whether you're going to get Josh in church, if it's Josh or whoever, yes. Went to see Josh today and invited him to the dinner or the chili dinner or or out to breakfast. And the reason why you invite him out to breakfast so you can invite him to church, that's measurable. You're making efforts to do what you put down. Do you understand? It, you don't have to just go and say, Josh, will you come to church? No. Done. No, that's not the way to do it. It's not going to get there, okay? I don't care if you got to bribe them to get a mirror. If the Lord gets a hold of them, that's okay. Do you know that nah, I'm not going to... There was a time where I hid money in songbooks at Liberty. I hid $5 bills in the songbooks. We also hid church members' names in our bulletin. If they found them, that was $5. You'd be surprised how many people came to church just to get a bulletin. Ah, my name's not here. I'm going home. No, they stayed. You know what? Is that wrong? I don't know, but we had some fun. We had some fun. Yeah, we had some fun. All right? 
We had Deacon that used to take people out for breakfast if they'd show up. Yeah. All right. Uh, show people that you care. Uh, if you show people that, what's that? What that old saying about people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's true. Uh, take a look at Romans 15 and 2. Sometimes I'll, there, there's actually a scripture. Let, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification, to build him up. You know, the best way to build them up is to introduce them to Jesus. I mean, the best way. Uh, I'm going to give you the number one reason that most people don't share their faith with anybody. Uh, believe it or not, it's not fear. Most people say, I'm scared try to witness them. I'm scared to try to, I, I don't know the Roman, well, you don't need to, to be honest with you. To be real honest with you, you don't need any verse of scripture whatsoever. If you tell them, you know what, I, I, I finally figured out I was a sinner and I asked the Lord to save me and forgive me and he did. How'd you do that? I'm just asking. Any scripture there? No. But it's right. Okay. People get so preoccupied. They get, they're preoccupied with themselves. Uh, my problems, my plans, my needs, my goals, my ambitions, my dreams, my agenda. It's me. Me today, me tomorrow, me this weekend. Preoccupied. Uh, I'll tell you something else too, folks. Only coming to church to share your faith isn't going to get it. I love to play cards. I love to. Whenever I got back in church and rededicated my life, I used to play cards with these guys all the time. We sat around, drank, smoked, played cards all the time. I rededicated my life, come back to work, said, Hey, I rededicated my life back in church. Come Friday night, I said, Hey, whose house we played cards at? I said, Huh? I said, whose house are we playing cards at? Well, you want to drink with us? Nope. You still smoke with them? No, not to drink. You ain't going to drink. There ain't no sense in you playing cards with us. Why not? Can't have any fun. I worked with these guys for years and years and years and years. Like I told you when I went to my son-in-law and listened, you know, I went to, uh, what's the name of the bowling alley over here? Mugshots. Yeah, went to Mugshots, listened to Alan and his band play. And, you know, everybody's screaming and yelling, it's noisy, you know, the band's playing loud, and everybody's sitting at our table, but me and my wife and daughter are drinking. We got our pop and what have you, and one of, one of the people that knew somebody in the band said, What do you do for a living? I thought I'm a preacher! <laughs> Everybody tried to hide their beer bottles. I don't know why I'm in the bar. You'd have thought I'd have said, I had AIDS and I'm contagious and I'm going to blow on all of your stuff. I'm 
will know. You know, it just. <laughs> I looked at my wife and said, Spare me. <laughs> Why not? I'm not in there drinking. I'm not in there doing anything stupid. I just wanted to live. They were playing oldies. I love those songs. I really do. Why can't I go listen to them? Just because I'm a preacher? No, because I'm in a bar. And some of these bars right here got some good food. Hacienda has got some good food. They serve drinks. This is not the booze. Not the booze. If you don't ever associate with lost people, how are they going to know how good God is? They're not going to know. Too many people like to think that all of a sudden they get in church and then they get to be goody two-shoes. They can't... Uh, Once you figure out your shape, <laughs> and then I want you to practice the Fran method of growing this church. Fran. Friend, relative, acquaintance, neighbor. Friend, relative, acquaintance, neighbor. God can build this church. I can't. Yeah, that's a lie. That's a lie. I could do that. Me and Kevin and Bob could put on a show. We could really put on some shows. If we got together, we could put on some good shows. And it probably get people here. But my Bible tells me, except the Lord build the house. You want the Lord to build the house, not us. That's not it. Okay? That's not it. I figured out a long time ago. Every now and then I get excited. My wife tells me that's not good for my throat. I get excited anyway. Sometimes it's not good for my heart. I get real excited and I'm up there going, ah! Was old Red Fox used to say it's going to be a big one? Oh, was that it, Red? Yeah, it's going to be a big one, Ethel, or whatever. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I get that way. Put some dreams on foot. Practice the Fran method and figure out what your shape is. We're all individuals. All right. Not only are we individuals physically, we're individuals spiritually. All right. Figure it out. Figure it out. All right. Brother Bob would. Dismiss us tonight, please.